Okay, hello everyone. Um, this, this little session is about investor relations, but before we start, I just wanted to say that Chloe's talk could not have come at a more opportune time for me because I was, I've been sitting here all morning going, oh my God, I'm about to give a public presentation and it's been my mindset block for, let's just say over 50 years. <laughs> so here I am doing it and actually, the intensity of the fear has turned, it's gone right down, and I actually just feel excited. Where's Gita? Turn the fear into excitement. Where is she? Gone for She's gone. Oh, also, we're meant to do the, the power woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, just to get into the zone. Um, so, anyway, so investor relations, it's kind of, I wanted to talk about how you find investors and how you look after them. But I thought before we start, we'd just kind of take a bit of a poll in the room of, obviously there's a lot of developers here, also some kind of service providers, but from, from the developers who, who are here, who has investors now and is happily working with them? So a lot, cool. like at least half. Yeah, yeah. At least, and yeah. are there any developers here who are at the stage where they're looking for money and are wondering how to get investors. So oh, slightly yeah. fewer, but still a, a good amount. 40%, yeah. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> so basically, in, when you're talking about investors and their money, and people talk about other people's money and it's used so flippantly, I think. But what I've realized is it, you know, it's people's life savings, it's money that they've worked really hard for and it means a lot to them and they are entrusting it to you. So it's not, you know, other people's money, oh yeah, just use someone else's money. No, 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 that's even more, it's more important than, you know, it's as important as your own money. And I just sort of want to come back to Carolina's point earlier about honesty, being honest about, yes, you know, we can all shout about our successes, but, you know, behind that, there's a lot of hard work and some really, horrible situations and things that have happened to us that we regret or that, you know. Mistakes we've made. Total mistakes. And so I, I want to own up at this point and, and talk about how actually horribly ashamed I feel that as an investor myself, I've basically lost a lot of money um, that, you know, my husband and I have worked really, really hard for over the years. And part of that was just inexperience and not realizing that there was such a thing as security. Um, you know, I've made two basically very large unsecured loans to developers that I trusted. And it's, you know, it's now looking very unlikely that I'll get my money back. So, you know, I, I'm just what I want to say is that I'm, as a developer now, I very much know what it's like to be that investor who is handing over their money to, for you to, you know, yes, they want a return, but they're also trusting you not to lose the the original amount and that is such a huge burden and responsibility that I think I feel even more keenly now so um, so actually those experiences have really served you because you've seen something good the, comes from everything doesn't it absolutely. yeah um, I mean Helen's had her own learnings which she will talk about in a little bit yeah. but first of all anyway I thought we'd just introduce ourselves um, very quickly so I run an, I, I'm part of an investment, uh, not investment, de development group. Helen is more of a professional investor and she consults for developers to help them present their deals properly to investors. Yeah, exactly how to, kind of what investors are looking for, how to present your deal in the best light, things you should be really emphasizing, how to kind of develop that credibility, you know, come across authentically yeah. as you are, because that's what's going to get you the business. Right? And I should say that Helen is now so sought after in that role that she is now learning to to basically smash through one of her mindset blocks, which is that she's actually worth paying for that information. So, you know, it's hard for her to do, but she's now saying, well, you know, I'll give you a bit of time free, but after that, you've got to pay me, guys, which is- yeah. Chloe, thank you, it, Chloe. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I, we all have a lot to thank Chloe for in this room, honestly. So I just, I'm just gonna show a little bit of our backgrounds. Um, it's more of mine, just because I've got more images to show. But um, so, 
I, I start. I was basically a mum for 16 years, full-time mum. My other mindset block was, you know, what can I do? I'm just a mum. What, what skills have I got to offer? But gradually, gradually, I've kind of moved into the world of property. And I started out doing buy-to-lets. I've basically worked as a buying agent in London, and I bought 30 properties for clients. I project managed the refurbs of them. I found tenants, styled them up, and, and moved on, and took a fee for each one. Did that 30 times, and then decided I wanted to get into development. So I now, through networking, which was a long story in itself, but I met these guys, um, Dan and Joe, they're based down in Devon, of all places. You've missed all the bit where I refer to you. <laughs> um, and so Dan and Joe have got a development company down in Devon. They've also got a construction company. But they didn't have the access to investors. And I was sort of, I've got the London presence and I was networking up here. So, so together we've kind of complemented each other. You know, I don't have everything, they don't have everything, but we, we've got a sort of good match going on. And then also Common through values. networking, um, we found the lovely Lizzie Fraser, who is obviously a property sister and can't be here today because she lives in Dubai. Um, but between us, we have got two big developments on the go now, and Lizzie and her company, which is QB Investing, is really, there are big investors for both. Um, the first one is an old office block that we found in Plymouth, and it was on right move. We bought it um, with Lizzie, and we're convert converting it to 21 apartments, Look at permitted those developments. These are CGIs. <coughs> can think you can probably guess who did them for us. Um, you know, without Carolina's help, you know, my, my business partners basically were like, what do you want to spend money on, on a posh London design company for? You know, the agent, our estate agent will do it for free. <laughs> and it's true, they will. But, you know, what are you going to get? And they're like, well, that's enough. You know, you and your fancy London ways. That, I get that a lot. <laughs> But thankfully, Lizzie was on my side, and she was like, no, this is non-negotiable. We as investors want this as well. So sorry, guys, it's, it's our condition. So, and you've not even got your show home, right? And they've got 50 people lined we've up. Got already, now, so we've got now, our show homes works, are launched right? in two weeks' time, and we've got 50 serious buyers wow. waiting <laughs> to... Boom, boom. And, and Chloe, I visualise that. I have spent, I spent all of Christmas just lying in bed, imagining a queue of young couples. <laughs> really though, I'm, I mean, that's gonna happen. <laughs> I know it's gonna happen, I just know. Um, but anyway, just so, you know, obviously a bit of smoke and mirrors there, that this is the reality of it currently. You know, it's, it's a work in progress. It's, it's scaffolding, it's kitchens half done, it's, um, worktops that I chose turn up and everyone goes, Claire, that was a really bad choice. It looks awful in the flesh. Sorry, got to change that. You know, there's lots of rubbish going on in the background as well, but it's, it's all happening. It's all fine. We've also got another um, scheme going on. This is, we bought this land with planning permission for nine new build houses. And again, Carolina has produced this beautiful idyllic scenario. It's, scene of what it will be like when it's finished. It will be like that. Um, I think there's another one here of the interiors. You know, wow. I worked with Carolina's team to sort of give them a bit of a feel for what I thought the market would like. And they came up with these, which is just brilliant. Again, we've sold one of these off plan already. And it's the, the site <coughs> looks like this. So <laughs> that is officially, it, it's a mud bath. It's, it's just crazy. You know, they're working in what the builders say are biblical conditions on this, on this mountainside in, in Cornwall, actually. But, you know, the houses are going up, but we have a reservation with money down from one, one person, but that would not have happened. And one, only one house launched. And but imagine, just big numbers, sorry to interrupt you, imagine what that would do to your financing costs, right? Save money already. Exactly, mm. exactly. And just to give you an idea of the numbers, weirdly, they both got very similar numbers. We've we raised about half a million in equity for each one, and then um, another 
another one and a half each. So it's like a million in equity and, and three million in development finance. And so I look back and I think that's me who was just a mum has found that much money. You know, with my business partner, we did it together, but it's like, how did that happen? What did I do? What skills did I channel? That's what you're going to tell us. But it's not like I've got a financial background. I haven't got, you know, a specific skill set. I just was like, I'm a dog with a bone with this. I am not going to let it get away. I'm going to make whatever phone calls I need to make. And, you know, we just made it happen through force of will it, over the course of about two painful years. <laughs> anyway. Nice um, so this is Helen. This is a very different lifestyle, you would think. So there's Helen on her balcony in Malta. Um, Carolina and I were there at the time. We did a great little photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it was such it is what Helen does. She's and tonics that day. She, spe she tonics. spends a lot of time in Bermuda, in Malta. She comes back to London for meetings. Yeah, I was just out in Dubai with Liz. Dubai. Actually, so. I mean, and it all looks very glamorous and, and ever yeah, so that, that's easy. that's the Insta side of it, isn't it? <laughs> There's another side of it. You know, I think, well, Helen will tell you, she's learned that pa being a passive investor, there is no such no, thing. <laughs> not, not if you want to make money and you don't want to lose it and you want to do it properly. It's, it's just no such thing as passive. Yeah. So, so um, oh yes, what we've learned sometimes the hard way, you know, the developer's always like, I've got this great deal, it's amazing. And Helen now is very sceptical and she's seen it all before. And, you know, she doesn't take things with a pinch of salt. It's a mountain, mountain of salt. salt. Yeah. So anyway, that, that's the end of our slideshow. We're now going to kind of move into a bit more of a discussion where we're going to ask each other questions, which are all completely pre-planned <laughs> and rehearsed. But it's going to sound ever so spontaneous. <laughs> um, so, Helen, <laughs> you're. Yes. OK, so my first question to Helen was this Helen's got a lot of experience as an investor, and she's done crowdfunding, and she's, she's invested direct to a developer. And I just want to ask you what are you looking for now when you decide to invest? So, I mean, you know, literally, like Carolina said, I could probably do a day's presentation, do a workshop on this, to be honest. You know, the deal is one thing in itself. And actually, I don't know if anybody's got the um, Property Investor News this month, but I've got an article. It's four pages. Oh, my. I didn't feel that long. Four pages. Uh, so I go into a lot of like what I look for uh, in the deal there. I have my rates and rents, I call them chat to me after I can go into all those the kind of the numbers the risks the exit the security the skin in the game da, 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 da. but really it comes down to the person and actually what really resonated with me as you were doing your intro there Claire is that what you've created with your investors and what I look for in a developer is kind of that authenticity and ultimately to you I know you are going to do right by your investors you know Carolina touched on it I was you know um, one of the investors in her and Thomas Escobet Century Spaces, their deal, and they did right by me as an investor, even under kind of challenging circumstances. There are several examples at the moment where people are not doing right by investors. Um, you know, talks me offline about that one. Um, but that's ultimately what, what, that's what I need to establish. And for me, that takes time. Um, you know, people come and say, I've got this deal, I've got this deal. Do you know what? I see a different deal every day of the week, believe me. And why do I choose one over the other? Because it comes down to that. I believe, even in the worst case scenario, I'll get my capital back. And it's one of my principles of kind of investing. Um, I've done, I did a presentation, I don't know if anybody was there, in the summer with John Coe. Um, that's one of my kind of fundamentals, don't lose the capital. I'm at a certain level or age or whatever you want to call it in life where I, I'm just not prepared to take that risk anymore. When I was younger, maybe, but, but now, no. Um, so it's about establishing your credibility, your experience. And, 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 you know, everybody talks about integrity and ethics. And that's just, they are lovely words. What happens when the hits the fair, right? Can I just say, I think it's interesting, because Helen and I had this conversation last night. And I said to her, you're not, ev you're not even talking about the deal. You're not talking about the numbers. You're talking about the people, basically. That's what's important to her. 
And you've established, exactly, you have, that's what you have established with your investors. So how did you find your investors? How have you, you know, made, made that work? So how do, we found them, we didn't go out looking for them, that's for sure. It kind of happened organically through relationships developing. Oh, that might be mine. Well, I've ordered one as well. <laughs> come back, come back, coffee, coffee, come back. You know, again, it goes back to it's other people's money. You don't want to take it lightly and you don't want to take anyone's money. Um, That's very key. Yeah, you want, to, you want to work with the people who you're going to get on with, whose values align with yours. And so by, by being honest about who you are and behaving on social media and in person in an authentic, honest way for you, you're going to attract the people who feel like they could work with you. They're like, yeah, I believe what you believe. You're going to do business the way I would do business. But why would you want to take money from people who you're always going to be at odds with them. They're always going to be undermining you or trying to find a chink. You know, you want to, you want to work with people who want you to do well. And, uh, you know, our investors call us out. You know, they'll be like, no, what, what, tell us why you, what you mean by that and, and explain it and justify it. But at the same time, if something goes wrong, I can call them. And like Lizzie will spring into action. She's a lawyer and she'll do her research and she'll, she's like an investment partner. Um, but going back to finding them, I, I think when I started out, I wasn't looking for investors because I didn't even know I wanted to be a developer. It was just like all an evolving situation. But during that time, I was just networking like crazy and without an agenda. And I look back and I think that couldn't have been a better strategy. Because if you've got an agenda, people pick it up. No one likes being sold to, no. right? It's like make the relationships yes. first. And then after a while, you're like, yeah, you know, I really like working with Geeta. I really like working with Jade. They're the people I, you know, I'd want to do business with them. When, when the opportunity arises, you know who it will, and you want to have fun along the way. It's, and also you don't want to take money from somebody where it's, you know, it's all the money they've got in the world. That's too much of a responsibility. Yeah. You know, it's so many factors to take into consideration. That's certainly one of the main, my main bits of advice for developers, be really bloody careful whose money you take. Yeah. And actually it's not even the amount, I talk about it again in the, in the article, so kind of have a look because I give an example there. But what does that amount of money mean to that person? Because if that is, that could be 50 quid. If that 50 quid is their life savings, you have got a highly emotional and emotionally involved person involved mm. with you. Do not expect res rational behavior. They might have, you know, a, a million pound in your deal, but if they've got a hundred million in the bank elsewhere, they're going to be a lot more rational and a, a lot more kind of probably professional about it. So yeah. be really careful whose money you take. I say like treat it and I want my money be, to be treated like it's your grandmother's money. Like what would you do? How would you look after that? Oh, You've and then somebody a... came, I told that to somebody and they came back to me and said, well, I'll go one better. I treat my investor's money as if it belonged to a Russian gangster. <laughs> I love it. It's like, I love actually, it. yeah, I it's love that it. scary. I love that. Um, but, and also, there's a lot of talk at the moment about JVs. JVs are like the flavor of the month. And, uh, you know, oh, you know, we've just met. Let's do a JV. Jess has talked about this yeah, quite a lot on instant. Instagram, yeah. which is so great. But it's about, you know, you want to do JVs with the right people for the right reasons at the right time. And you need to be transparent and authentic and the right people will come to you. But don't rush it. Don't jump into bed with somebody because as soon as you're in, you, you are, you're married for the next few years. And, you, you know, you could live to regret that decision. So as, as exciting as it is to kind of get into a, into a new relationship, let that mature first. Um, so I'm just now going to go back to Helen, because you assess a lot of deals. You're always looking, aren't you? But you are now quite well known as, as an investor, so you're probably now inundated, aren't you? Uh, yep. <laughs> Do you now look at, invest, at, at deals or developers, and are there things that just make you run for the hills? What, what are your red, red flags? Absolutely. There's, yeah, there's a lot of red flags. Again. You know, on the, on the deal side of it, if you're looking at rates and rents the way I do, those things are kind of very obvious. But some of it, um, you know, some, some of it's kind of a little bit more 
a little bit kind of a little more difficult to grasp. So, you know, we're all on Insta. We love social media. It can really work for us. I have to say, when it's overused, that's one of the things for me. When I see a developer and they're concentrating more on their Insta and their profile and their branding, we all know branding's very important, but there has to be a balance. There's, a balance. There's an absolute balance. You know, Ruth and Gillian have nailed this. They're getting on, they're doing it. Mm. You know they're, you know, focused and they're getting the bleeding work done, but they have the presence as well. But it's not, you know, kind of them going off around the world like the, actually like the things that I post now, I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anybody to report to, it's just my money. It's just my money. So, you know, but I want to see, you know, that's ultimately, that's the business deal you've made at the end of the day, right? You've taken somebody's money, you have to deliver the product. And, and you know, it is a balance and you do need that presence. I totally get that. But where is the energy going? Yeah, and and that's, that's really about balance. Uh, and one of the other me. things that you've said to me that really would put you off investing is when people put time pressure on you or you know there's like well you need to make a decision quickly i walked away from somebody that i really really wanted to work with because they did exactly that to me and i've been waiting for oh god a year or two years for a deal to come up the right deal with this person <laughs> and then they pulled this line on me and i'm like literally i'm like you know i'm out of here you're fired i'm just it's you know i'm no way no way there's always another deal. There's always another opportunity. You know that there really is. Yeah. So any type of emotional, and this was emotional pressure. This wasn't even just time pressure. This was emotional pressure. I'm like, how old do you think I am? Like, you're going to pull that one with me? No. Yeah. So. I mean, I think if anyone subscribes to Property Investor News, Helen has a, a very um, comprehensive article in there, interview really, yeah. where you talk about all of this in a lot more detail. Four whole pages. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, is it four? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you communicate really well. The communication is one, like, one thing, again, I'm very heavily kind of uh, focused on and I really believe, you know, again, that's something else that I look for in developers. You know, once you're on board, don't kind of forget about us and keep communicating. And I know you do that so well with yours because I've seen your investor reports, which are <laughs> works of art, you know. Unfortunately, they're are. such works of art. They're always late. <laughs> I, I don't think we've delivered one on time But yet. do you know what that says <clears throat> to me as, as an investor? Like the, the time and the care and attention that if you're putting that much kind of love and care and wanting to get that right and that's there's you know, a balance we haven't always got it right i have to be honest you know we are consistently late but if you're doing that for the communication with the investor imagine how much time and care and attention is going into the project yeah. as well it's yeah and, you know, it's and also it's like with us the investor reports aren't the only way we communicate we have whatsapp groups you know, I, I've got a little chat with Lizzie going on all the time. So she always says, look, I know the report's late again, Claire, but you know, we've got a conversation. It's not like we're completely in the dark. So you can have multiple channels of communication. You know, at some point they'll all come down to do site visits. Uh, we giving the investor what, what, what they want and how they and want to And we did ask them up front, to. what do you want? Exactly. And one of their Stop things was, that. well, actually, you know, we want to invest to get a return, but we'd all quite like to learn how to be developers ourselves. So, you know, this is a way for us to invest while learning how you guys do it. I think you, if you ask them now, they might go, I think we've changed our minds about that. <laughs> uh, I was with her last week. That's not what she was saying, believe me. Oh, really? No, no absolutely not. Well, no, no. You've kept them so happy that, you know. Oh, no, there's... but whether they'd want to then go and do it alone right, right, right. Well, is debatable. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of investors now come, well, not to us, but I, I know it happens. They're like, yes, we want to invest, but we also want to learn. And how much can you involve us so that, you know, with minimal risk, we're actually learning as much as we can and that's the importance of having those conversations finding out what your investor wants you've got your deal and you know how much you want and you've got your agenda and that's kind of fine what does your investor want do they want you know and, and you need to establish that if they want daily communication yeah. and that's you, you just don't have the bandwidth for that don't take that investor you know, and you've established what you what you want and you're managing that yeah. really well with your guys I, I've got some you know that, that we do have a lot more communication and other ones, I'm like, we're done. I feel like I've done my, my bit of the pie. I've, I've done my due diligence. I've asked all those questions. Now you go off and mm -hmm. do it. And we speak like, I don't know, once a month. Yeah. That's fine for me because of the way I've got the deal structured. Yeah. So. But I think however much communication investors want, they 
do want transparency and honesty. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they want to know when things go wrong as well as when things go right. But at the same time, there's a balance there. Because yeah. if you involve, if you tell them every time, because prop there's problems every day in property. You know, you wake up and you're just solving problems. It's a, that's that's your job. So you can't be telling the investors everything. But yeah. if balance. there's something bigger, you know, certainly with investors like. Lizzie and her group, you know, they'd go, right, let's put our heads together and see how we, we solve this together. And that's so. the beauty of choosing the right investor. And it's very important for investors to choose the right developer, one that's going to work with you like that in terms of, you know, kind of partnership and be involved, not cut you out and, you know, you know as soon as a developer goes quiet, honestly, my alarm bells go. <laughs> so keep communicating. Yeah. Yeah, you do. So... Uh, we haven't got that much longer, I'm sure. I was going to ask Helen, what one piece of advice would you give to developers? Nope, I always get this one wrong. Yes, no. What, uh, what no. So with the developers in the house, Every house, you know. time I get it wrong. Is there one I piece of advice you. you would give to potential investors that you wish you'd known at the start? Oh, there's, there's so much. Of Definitely course read that lots. article. Um, take your time and take, you know, choices, yeah. Choices take your time over that and actually trust your gut. The mistakes I've made and what I would say is I've never lost money on a deal yet. So, uh, but, but the deals that, you know, kind of maybe there's a few I wish I hadn't done, I knew, I just knew here. But I was over eager, there was a frenzy, you know, I wanted to get involved in something and I knew I shouldn't have and I really should have told so yeah. trust your gut, really. And the question back to you, so your advice for kind of, you know, there was at least, yeah, about not quite a half, but a lot of people looking for funding. What's yeah. your advice? Because you've done it so well. Okay. Well, my advice is if you get it right the first time by doing all the things we've been talking about, you'll never have to look for money ever again. <laughs> That's true. Because they will want to keep working with you. And already our investors, you know, we're not, we haven't exited it, but, you know, it's, they're, they're both the projects are looking like they will end well. And we've got the investors going, OK, guys, so what's next? You know, wouldn't mind kind of rolling the money over? And you're just thinking, oh, well, that, that would easy. be nice. Exactly. <laughs> Keep I don't need to ever network again now. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I would, my, um, my one thing for but, but having said that, you know, if you want to get to the end and have those investors say that you have got to get your head down and work every day and, and do the hard grind which it is and and i this is what i was talking to ruth about the other day you know you get to a point where things are your your profile is is becoming a bit more out there and people are offering you opportunities and it's very easy i think to be dazzled and distracted by the new and you know grow my pipeline and what's next and what you know but actually deliver on what you've got oh, and good, do it yeah. well and in at the moment i'm barely on social media because every day i've got things to do that are way more important for me to do than to be posting on social media and part of me is thinking oh shit i'm on not I, you haven't posted but sorry fuck it i, I yeah <laughs> You know, part of me is a major teenager that, you know, gets off on all of that. But I've also, my business partner says, you know, down here in South West Clare, no one has a social media account. We think, <laughs> we, we think you lot are a load of, I won't yeah. say the words. <laughs> but, you know, if that's what you like to do, you do it, Claire. You know, it's obviously brought us great things. And so I've really kind of taken that on board. I'm like, no, I don't have to post weekly. I don't even have to post until I've got something to say or and if I do have something to say I'd rather it was like oh my god this ha this terrible thing happened and this is how I've made it right rather than all this endless smoke and mirrors about oh, you know how brilliant it all is because it's just not Honestly. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it this is just where we are at the moment um, you know we try and give a little kind of an introduction of art. Look at them. you know we do an executive summary with some funny pictures but it gives like an overview um, we do a sales and marketing update and then you know, it goes into all the facts and figures. Where are we budget to actual? Where are we on the time frames? We've got a, a kind of traffic-like system so that the investors can see you know, which areas 
have potential risk and elements. All this is adding to the, the confidence that an investor has in you. So when something happens, and this is property, right? Something does go wrong. When something happens, you've managed expectations from the beginning. So you don't freak out like, yeah, well, we kind of saw that one coming. Or actually, we've got this far and nothing's happened You know, so far. It's gone wrong. So actually, I have the confidence that you can manage this and we're just going to be fine. Yeah. No, th th this is just a spreadsheet that my business partner does. I don't do this. He gives me this. If the Gantt chart, it must be some kind of software. Yeah. I, to your point, not everyone would no, no, and that's no. very true. And that's, yeah, and there's. But I think our investors investor do wants? want this, yeah. and they will go. So on this, on this line here, you know, where you say this, what do you mean by that? And they're like, oh my god, you know, you've really got to know. Well, I, then I just go, Dan, can you explain? Because <laughs> I don't know. So I don't know if anybody was at the National Development Summit, but I did an article in the um, in Brendan's handbook, and one of my kind of main points in there is all investors are not created equally. And what I mean is exactly you give that to my mum and dad, and they'd be like, mind blown, yeah. literally. But kind of a more professional investor, a Lizzie type or a me type. And, and you need to know up front, you know, what level of detail. Yeah. And, and then, even yeah. then, it's a work in progress. You know, what, what about this works for you? What doesn't? What would you like to see more of? And we try. We try. And then I always add some pictures at the end to show them, you know, what does we the project look like now? Yeah, exactly. It actually looks a, a lot more yeah. finished than this now. But, mm. yeah. Cool. So. Thank you. Thank you.